If you can hear the sound of my voice, then you've made it. We are just one week away from the Kentucky Derby. My name is James, and I am you, U.S. racing expert for bettinggods.com. I'm happy to be here. Uh, before we get to the Kentucky Derby, we've got some Saturday races at Belmont Park to cover. Uh, I'm going to touch on the Kentucky Derby to start things off. Of course, I always like to give a plug to the folks that make all of this possible, bettinggods.com. Uh, check out the website, sign up today. I'm sure it has what you're looking for. Uh, and now is a great time because they've got special offers for uh, not only for myself, but for the other tipsters on the website. Uh, without further ado, though, I'm going to get to some of the information that I have for you. The Kentucky Derby, I want to put up some, uh, at least a list of the names of the runners that are going to be competing in next week's race. Uh, and it looks like, I mean, it, it's always a full field of 20. That's going to happen. But we see here epicenters are likely morning. Well, these are our morning line favorite. Um, Messier, Taiba, Zandon. A lot of people are saying Zandon is going to be the favorite here. I think it's going to be epicenter, maybe Taiba from the, the quote unquote Bab Baffert barn. Uh, one thing I'll say is that the horse on the bottom listed here in due time, he might get knocked off by uh, Classic Causeway because the owners kind of flip flopped on their decision there. They weren't going to run Classic Causeway and now they are. So that would push in due time off the list. Uh, but the rest of these look like they're pretty secure and we should see them in a starting in the starting gate a week from now. Uh, and a lot of it should be a, a fun day of racing at Churchill Downs. It always is. So uh, take a look, soak it in and see if there are any names that stick out to you. And we'll we'll have our selections uh, next week. We're going to do a Kentucky Oaks uh, broadcast on Friday and then one on Saturday, a recording rather. And we'll get to all the exciting racing, racing action then. But for now, we're going to continue on to opening weekend at beautiful Belmont Park from New York. We should have sunny skies and uh, fast and firm conditions here. We're going to start with race number five. This is a six and a half furlong allowance race for New York bred Philly and mares, uh, three-year-old and up. And here I like a horse named Fancy Feline. And Fancy Feline, uh, from a, a speed figure standpoint, I'm not going to say she's one that lays over these, but the odds that you're getting uh, eight to one morning line, you might even get closer to 10 to one or 12 to one on her. Uh, Trainer James Bond does a nice job with these New York breads. Uh, overall, he's winning at 16%. And this horse gets the, the break in weights because of the, uh, the apprentice jockey, Jose Gomez, who's doing a really nice job. Uh, speed figure from a speed figure standpoint, though, uh, the 63, 63, 70 is a little more consistency than we've seen from a lot of the other runners in here. We see 53s, we see 53s here, uh, and so on down the line. As you get to the outside, we'll see a couple of horses with maybe a little more consistent numbers, but we see 40s, we see 50s, and so on. So with the odds on Fancy Feline, we're going to take a shot at uh, eight to one, and we're going to. Just take a look at a quick stat for trainer H. James Bond. Over the last 30 days on in dirt races, he's won with three of six horses with an average payoff of $23.20. He had a 24 to one shot that won. He had a 10 to, 10 to one shot that won. A lot of times these trainers get streaky and I like to catch them when they're on the upswing. So let's try to catch a <laughs> trainer H. James Bond here. Uh, race number six is a maiden special weight race at seven furlongs on the grass. And this one is also uh, for Phillies and Mares three and up. And it, these races can be kind of tough because they're first time starters. You never really know who's going to run well first time out the gate, but big B is the runner we're going with here. And this is not a first time starter, but uh, he's coming, she's coming off a year layoff now for trainer Bill Mott and Mott excels with runners like these. He wins at 25% with these types of long layoff runners that are, have been off for more than six months. Um, and while he doesn't quite excel in turf sprints, uh, what I did like about Big B was this, the, the work tab. So they gave her some time off. Something must have happened right around here in June, June the 5th. And then she had she didn't work again until December the 31st. But since then, she's been putting up pretty consistent workouts and quick workouts. Here's a 36-second one. And then they bumped up to four furlongs. Here's a four furlongs, a snappy 47, five furlongs. And then there's this one hidden kind of four workouts back 46 and three. That's pretty fast. So I like the way this one's been working. I think she's uh, headed up to the race in the right direction. So big B for us, of course, uh, Jackie Jose Ortiz, uh, one of the best in the business and trainer Belmont like having them on board. So that's our selection for race number six, moving along to race number seven. This is a mile and a 16th allowance optional claiming race uh, for three-year-olds and up. 
And I like Southern District here uh, for trainer Chad Brown, who's been winning a ridiculous rate at, at Aqueduct and just continues on a tear, 34% on the year. Southern District, there's not a ton to say. I, he's one for one of the distance. But I will mention, if we take out his turf races, right, we're going to put a line through these turf races. And then we have the races where he raced with blinkers right here. So we'll cross that one off as well. Uh, we've got a win here on when he broke his maiden at Churchill Downs. We have this huge speed figure that he put up last time out where he was geared down at the end. And he beat some pretty good horses. Three Jokers and Castle Chaos are not uh, no tomato cans there. And then there's this one race on July 15th where he stumbled at the break and he was steadied. So he can be forgiven for that. But I think the recipe for this one is no turf, no blinkers, just let him run. And if he can repeat anything similar to what he put up last time, I think he's the one to beat here. Uh, he, he drew away and he, would, he won most impressively. So Southern District for us in race number seven here at Belmont Park. Moving along to race number eight, this is a mile and a 16th on the inner turf, an allowance race for New York Reds. and. This is a tough little race. These horses are pretty evenly matched. I'm going with Rally Squirrel, who I suppose is named after the New York Mets with their whole uh, Jeff McNeil, Francisco Lindor dust up that happened last year. Uh, trainer Mike Maker has had a pretty good run uh, of late, and I have a stat on him in a second, but this one's coming off a layoff from Gulfstream and picks up Jackie Joel Rosario. It's an upgrade from Jackie um, Paco Lopez. Two for four at the distance, very nice to see. And the speed figures are right there with what fits in this race. Uh, but like I said, trainer Mike Maker, over the last 30 days in turf maiden races, he's winning at a rate of 27% in the money just about half the time and an average payoff of $12.20. So rally squirrel for us in race number eight. And then finally moving on to race number 10. This is a six and a half furlong maiden special weight race for New York Reds. And I'll be honest, there's not a ton of talent in this race. Um, a couple of horses look okay, but I'm going with basis risk, and I'm hoping we get the four to one odds here. Again, trainer Chad Brown, we've gone with a couple of these horses today, winning at 34%. You can't really, it's hard to look past that. Uh, Jockey uh, Manny Franco has been on a lot of these runners for him. And while he doesn't have any five for long workouts in his holster, which I usually like to see, you can trust him with these first time starters. And um, hold on, I, uh, have to, I don't want to advance my screen just yet. But, but one thing to, to, to note here, uh, Classic Empire, delay of game, the breeding on this horse, they paid $310,000. The typical Classic Empire goes for uh, seventeen five, So that's about a little bit less than 18 times the normal stud fee uh, they paid for this horse, basis risk. So they must have seen something that they liked. Uh, this one's got a, a half sister named Spa Ready, who also won first time out for these same connections. So I'm going to say they have this one ready to go uh, right out of the gate, spaces risk. Interesting note, trainer Chad Brown, the last horse that he had win as a first time starter or run as a first time starter in a sprint race at Belmont Park is the horse we were just saying might be our Kentucky Derby favorite, Zandon. So I thought that was kind of interesting. When we look at uh, Jad Brown's stats and in dirt races with first time starters on the New York circuit, using Manny Franco in sprint races, uh, they went at 23% together. All that added up says we like basis risk in this race. That about wraps it up for me. Once again, uh, you can find me on Twitter at God's Tipster. We've got some exciting content coming out uh, later on this week for the Kentucky Derby, of course. Uh, if you have anything to say feel free to comment on the, on the youtube video below or like i said you can find me on twitter at god's tipster good luck this weekend let's make some money so we can have it for the derby take care bye-bye